Welcome to Subramani. Uh, if I were to go for a very short distance, say one kilometer, maybe I would walk. If I were to go for five, six kilometers, maybe I would take my cycle. What if I have to do 20 kilometers, maybe I take my car or I would uh, travel by public transport, take a train, take a bus or things like that. But for none of this, I need any help from any outsider. I don't need... Uh, However, if I were to book a ticket to go to Bhubaneswar, I need the help of my laptop, I need the help of my phone, Where, uh, but I would do my own booking. I would go compare uh, airlines, timings, etc. and uh, go. But however, if I have to go to Ladakh and I want to see all the parts of Ladakh and I don't even know what all I am supposed to see, I'd rather hire a tour guide who will take me there. What am I talking about? I am talking about saying I will be making my journeys and each journey I will not follow the same pattern. Now come to the same even in uh, investing. Uh, to put money in PPF I don't need an advisor. I need some advisor who tells me that there is something called PPF. If I have lived under a rock and I don't know what is PPF then I need somebody to tell me that. But beyond that to fill up a form, go to the bank and give it or do it online from the second transaction onwards, I don't really need an advisor. So sometimes you think you can do it yourself but uh, sometimes you think an advisor helps. So do you need an advisor to suggest which equity fund, which uh, debt fund or uh, even uh, direct equity or if you want to do futures and options with your broker, right? So somewhere you might need an uh, agent, somewhere, somewhere you need an advisor, somewhere you need a guy who will just do the administrative work and you know, you, so there is no one single answer. Am I a DIY? Yes, I am a DIY, but I use an uh, IFA, right? I use an IFA for my equity investments, uh, mutual fund investments and for my uh, equity investments, I use a broker and I pay perhaps a very high brokerage compared to what you must be paying, right? I don't do it through an online broker. I think I need a physical broker, right? So. Everything has its advantages and disadvantages. You have to know what you, what portion of it you are using. Now let us see whether uh, you qualify in my head as to whether you should be doing DIY or let us say uh, here is a checklist for you if you want to be a DIY. First of all, you should be interested in this stupid process called investing. It is dull, it is boring and you don't want to spend your Sunday afternoons and Saturday evenings doing this, then this is not for you. For some of us who like doing this, we may say, oh, it is enjoyable, it is only five minutes a month or five minutes a week. Bullshit. It is much more time consuming and it is very painful. It is at least as painful as going to the dentist, right? So don't think uh, or even worse, oncologist. So don't think it is going to be very easy and very simple. It is dull and boring and you will not enjoy the process. You may enjoy the process of saying I should be so much in equity, so much in this. That is at the intellectual level. At the physical level of going, filling up the forms or doing it online can be very boring, very, very boring. Right? So first that. Second, you don't have to understand just picking the fund. That is the stupidest thing which you can ever hear. You need to understand risk, you need to understand return, you need to understand volatility, you need to understand documentation, how to make a will, whether to make a will, when to make a will, who should make a will, right? You have to understand all those things. It's not that you should know how to do it, but you should at least know that you have to do it, right? That itself is and again, this could be boring and therefore you may not do it. And even the financial experts whom you see, personally their portfolio may be underperforming the index, but it should not bother overperforming the index or underperforming the index as long as you meet your goals. Also, some assets can run up and when the assets run up and there is a craze in the market, you will find all kinds of justification. Currently look at the price of gold. This is what gold does. It goes up. It stays uh, steady, does nothing for 5-6 years and then it does a dramatic spurt. Uh, when it does the dramatic spurt, you will hear stories like Buffett has actually underperformed gold and uh, SPY versus GLD. It is GLD which has done well over 3 years, over 5 years also, it doesn't matter. But none of these matters because if you were in a portfolio of just gold, 
you would just look as stupid when uh, the markets go up and gold doesn't go up right so you need your asset allocation but sorry i am uh, talking of something else do you know all this do you are you interested in all this right so and to learn you can how do you learn you learn by reading reading what reading blogs you have no clue why that person is writing that blog is he writing those blog to have fun like i do or is he coming there to teach you or is he coming to sell something you have no clue on all those things bloggers churn sellers very quickly because ultimately if they've been in blogging they've built a base of people uh, why not sell to them right i am not getting into right or wrong but those things will happen so can you read blogs and come to correct conclusions i have my doubts but also understand like i said earlier there is no all or none you can use an advisor for some portion you use a brain surgeon when you have a brain problem right you use him for one hour right and for one hour you pay him maybe 2500 3000 rupees whatever but you don't have to own a brain surgeon or a heart surgeon you buy them by the hour exactly how you should buy the services buy it by the hr and then decide to do it on your own but if you need suppose you have a let's say you have a 20 crore portfolio that's become big at that stage hire one person to look after it at the intellectual level and somebody who will do the physical uh, transactions um, what i mean is uh, keeping everything up to date and all that sometimes out of sheer laziness you don't do it and then you regret like for example i don't think uh, everybody can do an audit and come out and say yes my name appearing in the school living certificate passport uh, aadhar card pan card uh, some 20 mutual funds or five mutual funds and insurance companies everywhere it is perfectly correct have you done that exercise right so all those things are important you have to do but at least you should have an uh, advisor who will nudge you into doing those things so if you can write your own uh, financial diary if you can create your own financial investment logic and philosophy etc and maintain it properly and maintain a diary writing down why you bought certain things why you didn't buy certain things right if you can do all that uh, then you there i mean you more or less arrived so understand one thing having two diaries is important one diary where you write down what you think uh, why you are acting on certain things and another diary where you write down maybe uh, what you hear from experts and uh, check it out after 6 months or 8 months and see how the whole thing pans out right so if you can do all those things if you have the humility to accept that you will make mistakes and that all big people everybody makes mistakes the question is how much money do you earn when you are right and how much money do you lose when you are wrong right obviously the right has to be far greater than the wrongs so if you have the humility to accept that you make mistakes then uh, if you have involved your spouse completely which means uh, she knows what you are buying why you are buying what you have invested how it is to be in cash what is the name of your agent if you have communicated that very well or if you can sit and do that with your children right maybe your wife is not interested it doesn't matter spend some time with your children right then do that when you realize uh all this is happening when you also realize that the in, uh, advisors that you are meeting don't live up to your reputation uh, don't live up to the uh, to your expectation then you have got to look at and say you know am i missing something have i got the wrong advisor why do i have an advisor who doesn't have enough experience why does he keep saying that trading is bad and investing is good ultimately it is up to us to decide what we want to do right so do you also turn out to be an advisor for the family when anybody wants to invest money do they come to you naturally do they pick up the phone and speak to you they may not listen to you that's a different thing but do they at least consult you then it's a good good uh, indicator that yes people think you know about investing right <clears throat> more importantly do you have the discipline the track record of being disciplined etc to be able to be a financial advisor to somebody else if the answer is yes then there is no reason why you should not be one and why you should not be a diy but not everybody will pass this stringent test 
make sure you pass really honestly and then take a decision of whether you want to be a DIY. Thank you.